Hey everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today I have finally gotten my hands on Intel's new Raptor Lake i7-13700K. We are going to once again be looking at my personal rig here, which currently houses the i5-12600K. A big reason for me wanting to upgrade to the new 13700K is while playing competitive games like League of Legends, I wanted to consistently hit 240 FPS to match my 240Hz monitor, but with the 12600K it wasn't keeping up very well. We are going to compare just League of Legends gameplay today. The purpose of this video is more to show everyone how to properly upgrade to a 13th gen Intel processor from a 12th gen Z690 board. But as you can see from the gameplay here, in teamfights we do see pretty frequent dips. Once again, I'm looking for something that will sit solidly at the 240 FPS mark, and although this CPU is still running pretty well, it isn't quite perfect. I am going to do more in-depth benchmarks of the 13700K in the future, but that will be a little later on down the road. For now, let's go through the install process. So to start, we need to grab the latest BIOS update from Asus's website so that our motherboard will actually be able to recognize our 13th gen CPU. I'm using the Tough Gaming Z690 plus Wi-Fi D4. Once we have that downloaded, extract it onto a flash drive and boot up our 12th gen rig. Get into the BIOS and go to the Easy Flash utility, find your flash drive with the new BIOS file on it and install. Pretty simple. And once that is finished, I'm going to boot into Windows to make sure everything is working properly. Now that we are all done, it's time to actually swap in the new CPU. It is also at this point that I would recommend doing a quick CMOS clear. I forgot to capture it on camera, but your motherboard should either have a button to hold down for a few seconds or two pins to jump with the screwdriver also for a few seconds. And if you aren't comfortable with either of those methods, you can also remove the battery for about 15 to 20 minutes and that should also clear the CMOS as well. Moving on, let's take off the old cooler. My 240mm AIO was a pretty simple install and was just as easy to take off. Only problem I had was some of the standoffs came out with the screws, which is a little annoying, but not the biggest deal. Once the 12600K is revealed, I'm going to clean off the old thermal paste as best I can. If you remember my previous video, I definitely used way too much thermal paste as quite a bit seeped over the sides, but it's not the biggest deal. Now that everything is cleaned off, it's time to officially install our new processor. Apply some thermal paste and reinstall the 240mm AIO liquid cooler. All right, it's the moment of truth, guys. Hopefully we get a post, and we do. Awesome. So from here, everything looks pretty great, but I think this is where I made my first mistake on our new platform. I probably should have let it boot into Windows safely, but I went ahead and decided to try and enable XMP. The kit currently installed is a 16 by 16 gigabyte, 3600 megahertz CL16 kit. The computer did a restart, and now we don't get a post. 
As you can see from the yellow DRAM light, it's obviously a RAM issue, which is probably caused by the XMP overclock being applied. So I decided to swap the RAM kit for our trusty 3000 MHz Crucial Ballistics kit, and we posted pretty quickly. I applied the XMP profile, get a restart, but this time it just goes straight to the BIOS instead of Windows. Uh, what gives? Well, for some reason, when I applied the XMP profile on my 3600MHz kit, the first NVMe slot on my motherboard just stopped working. I tried all sorts of different solutions like resetting the CMOS again, reseeding the NVMe, and even the RAM, but nothing seemed to work. But when I switched it into one of the slots underneath the GPU, it registered and booted to Windows just fine, with our 3000MHz XMP enabled. So at this point I was thinking I kind of wanted to swap RAM anyways because I liked the RGB on the Crucial Ballistics kit, and I wasn't really making full use of the better speeds on the 3600 kit anyway, but I still wanted 32GB of RAM to use, so I added two more sticks to fully populate the motherboard. Everything looked great in the BIOS, but once we got into Windows, it could only see two sticks, which made absolutely no sense to me. I began to try all sorts of RAM configurations to see if I had a dead RAM slot, but no matter where I slotted in the sticks in any configuration, it would read them and boot just fine. It just didn't want to register all four DIMMs on Windows. I even ran the Windows Memory Diagnostics tool to try and see what was going on, but no failures were detected. At this point, I gave up on the Crucial Ballistics kit and went back to my G-Skill Ripjaws 3600MHz kit, and I just set the speed to 3200MHz, it booted perfectly fine, and everything is working great. You know, I did read online that 3200MHz is, you know, quote unquote the max that the Z690 can handle. Even though it was running at 3600MHz just fine with my 12th gen processor, but whatever. 3200MHz CL16 is standard anyway, so it doesn't really bother me. Finally, we are in Windows with everything seemingly working okay, outside of the first NVMe slot not working, and my RAM not being able to be used at its full capacity. My other concern was the 240mm AIO. I know the wattage these processors can pull is a lot higher than last gen, and I really need to make sure my system can be cooled properly. Otherwise, I'm going to need to upgrade to a 360mm AIO. I decided to stress test it with Cinebench for 30 minutes. As you can see, the temps don't really climb any higher than 80 degrees at its max. Maybe I should have ran both the Heaven benchmark with Cinebench to really bring up the temp inside the case, but I am usually never pushing my rig to that kind of extreme. I am pretty confident, even in those conditions, it would probably still stay at a safe temp. Well, with all the troubleshooting out of the way, let's play a game of League of Legends and see if the upgrade was worth it. Honestly, I am pretty blown away. I know it's just League, but I can really feel a big difference. It's hard to describe unless you played on both setups, but even with the slight FPS dips I was getting before, I could really feel it. Now they are completely gone and it is a much more consistent experience. I would say for my use, the upgrade was worth it, and honestly, the whole experience was a lot of fun, especially since I'm a pathetic League of Legends addict. And I'm fucking addicted! So I can't quit! Now I did find one potential solution on the web a day after I did all this recording, which I kind of idiotically didn't think to try, and this is installing the latest ME drivers. Although I didn't realize new Windows drivers could potentially fix motherboard issues like the NVMe drive and XMP not working, but I mean, I'll give anything a shot at this point. Right now in front of you guys, and we will see if everything gets fixed, so let's go on this little journey. Let's start with the update, ME update tool.
Is that, is that it? Well, now that I just royally screwed up uh, all my audio, sorry about that. Oh, here we go. We, okay, we might have actually just found what we needed. <laughs> Finally. Oh, okay, so... Okay. I'm praying that this works, man. Okay, so... Yeah, I already had it. Does that mean that now it will work when I do this? Oh my gosh, yes. <laughs> okay. I mean, this it's fine. I don't... Okay, now we're going to wait for this update. Wow. This was such a pain. Okay. Well, now we're probably on the audio from the good old, uh, from the good old camera. Let's hope that we get a post, huh? Or, well, we should get a post no matter what, but. No, it's definitely doing a little more. Okay. Let's try, I'm not even gonna, I mean obviously I have to talk to you guys through the camera now. Uh, okay, oh that was neon, it's fine. Let's try and... Let's try and enable XMP. We get a post. No way. Look at that. Oh, let's just see and make sure that it works. Hey, I don't know if you guys can see that. <laughs> Maybe I'll try zooming in here. Thirty six hundred megahertz, everybody. It actually worked. <laughs> Doing the ME firmware update. Uh, the other, the only other thing we got to do is swap the M.2 slot and see if that works. Load into Windows and not. I think it's gonna load into Windows. We are at a hundred percent, everybody. All the troubleshooting. Now I'm just going to go ahead and put my plates on, and I will see you guys back when I'm actually able to use my real mic. 
I just wanted to thank all you guys for watching. I hope you found it enjoyable and educational today. Um, I'm really shocked actually that doing this simple update uh, fixed literally all of our problems. Um, I'm gonna leave a link to the forum thread in the comment, or not just comments, um, in the description below. Um, so that if any of you guys are having the same problem as me, um, that the obviously the ACES forum is an excellent resource and you know all of my troubleshooting and expertise couldn't figure it out until I figured out I just needed to do an MEI you know driver update and then it literally fixed every problem with the with the system and it's running perfectly now so that's awesome um, I made this video to really just show some awareness about how difficult things can be when you're buying into you know new things right away on launch and a lot of issues probably haven't been ironed out yet um, with the 13th gen stuff. Although, you know, like I said, with this update, things are going a lot better. Um, most of the time, it's worth waiting or going with last gen stuff, honestly. Um, even with a guy like me, I still make a lot of mistakes um, and have a hard time troubleshooting everything. Um, some thing, sometimes there really isn't a solution to the problem either which is kind of what I thought was going on. Um, you're just kind of stuck waiting for BIOS updates from the manufacturer, um, which like I said, is what I figured I was going to have to do, um, which I'm glad I didn't. <laughs> um, but once again, guys, thanks. Please thumbs up the video if you really enjoyed it. Hit subscribe if you want to get more content from me um, and feel free to leave a comment with questions or help me get you know higher engagement. That's always awesome. Uh, before I give my final goodbye, I'm just going to give you a quick word from our sponsor for today's video. Today's video is brought to you by us. Here at Omni Array Electronics, we make custom built PCs at a great cost. We offer free shipping and is built with the care you would expect from a smaller business like ours. And if you want something more rustic, go out and check out our friends at Electronic PC, where they do custom wood grain PCs that look really incredible and can mix in with a more traditional themed home much better than a normal steel PC. Once again, check us out on Omni Array Electronics or head over to our friends at Electronic PC for any of your custom build needs. Thanks for giving that a watch guys. I hope to see you all in our next video.